Welcome to the Virginia Quilt Museum's eighth quilt turning. Today we have three quilts for you and we hope that you uh, enjoy seeing these quilts and are inspired to make something beautiful yourself. This quilt is called Urban Systems circa 2015 and the maker is Paula Golden. It was donated by the artist herself Paula is well known through the quilting world for her patterns and articles, such as those published in The Professional Quilter, The Foundation Piecer, and Quilts with Style. She is also the co-author of Quilts of Virginia 1607 to 1899, The Birth of America, and Through the Eye of a Needle. She has curated and participated in many exhibits as well as no as well as a notable educator in the world of quilting paula attended college to work in the medical field while she enjoyed getting to work in the hospital environment and the challenges that came with it she desired to work with textiles she later attended graduate school to get a degree in independent studies which allowed for a new relationship with the arts she sees a connection uh, between art and science. She stated, I learned that there is equally much work to be done to learn what an artist is and does, including many of the same skills, study, practice, attention to detail, understand, understanding chemical reactions that are involved in the sciences. Art and science are intermingled and one cannot exist without the other. This quilt is an art quilt made in 2015 in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Virginia Quilt Museum. It is a result of a class Paula took on surface design. Art quilts provide an outlet to experiment with textiles and color as well as media. It allows for the quilter to base their design off a concept instead of a pattern. Urban Systems is a whole cloth quilt painted and printed with different dyes. Painted quilts allow for color to be added to a cloth after the quilt has been quilted. Urban systems used an air conditioning cover, water pipes, and a plastic grid as relief images. The inspiration for this quilt was the concept of patterns and how they are used in our everyday life wondering if they have a limiting or limitless repetition. Mm -hmm. This quilt is Fanny Jane's Delight, circa 1880. Maker is Fanny Jane Richards Foster. This quilt top is part of the Patsy Ann Thomas collection and was designed by her great grandmother, Fanny Jane Richards Foster. Fanny Jane is buried in Page County, Virginia. Of the many fabrics she had used, the most notable are the double pinks in some of the squares and triangles, and the cadet blue is used in the star flower pattern. The cadet blue is important because it was not seen before 1880, allowing us to better date this quilt. As for the double pinks, these were commonly seen between 1880 and 1910. A solid pink was not created until after 1910. A double pink was created because the cotton was unable to color fast or retain the color due to fading or washing out. This type of pink has fibers of white undyed cotton showing through the pink colored cotton. While pinks were common in the wardrobe of little girls, pinks were not often seen as appropriate streetwear for women. This is because double pinks often have many different names used to make disrespectful jokes towards an ethnic group. They have been called slave pinks or Portuguese pinks, which would have been used to insult new immigrants and newly freed African Americans because these cultures sometimes preferred brighter wardrobes. Middle to upper class women during this time did intricate and advanced needlework as a pastime activity. This quilt shows this because the maker hand cut each of the small triangles and then sewed them together. This would have taken a great deal of time, consideration, skill, and patience. 
This may also be why she never quilted the top. Handwork like this shows the role of women during the Victorian period. Women in the 1800s were considered too frail mentally and physically to leave the home. The home was her sphere and, where, and was where she was in control. Men were part of the public sphere and were in control of business and politics. Soon after the creation of this quilt, women would begin to more actively seek the right to vote, a better and more formal education, and start to enter the public sphere. This is the wig rose variation quilt, circa 1850. The maker was Rebecca Beckwith Radcliffe. She was from Dorchester County, Maryland, and created this quilt around 1850 for her granddaughter, Leolin. This quilt was then passed down to her, great, her granddaughter, Marianne. Both Marianne and Leolin were members of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. This pattern is known by many names, including the Whig Rose pattern or the Democratic Rose. While it is not confirmed if this pattern is actually a political statement or if it just happens to show the fashion of the mid-1800s, this pattern is often linked to the formation of the 1833 Whig Party by former National Republicans. Whigs were active within politics until the mid-1850s, which is around the time this quilt was made. <clears throat> the, the other major party during this time was the Democratic Party, which is why this pattern has also been called the Democratic Rose, since the pattern has been claimed by both. In the 1830s, the Whig Party originated because they wanted the United States to become a more industrial country and in opposition to the Democratic President Andrew Jackson. The majority of Whigs were entrepreneurs, reformers, Protestants, and the urban middle class. The party attempted to create their own economy economic program, however, a strong economy did little to help their cause. The last supporters of the Whig Party faded after the Civil War, but similar ideologies remain within the Republican Party. Presidents Lincoln, Hayes, Arthur, and Harrison were Whigs before becoming Republicans. It is possible that the maker, Rebecca, was reflecting her political opinion in this quilt since she did not have the right to vote or have her voice heard during this time. The other name that's commonly given to this pattern is the Rose of Sharon, which came from the Song of Solomon Bible verse and represents marriage and love. Quilts done in this fashion were used for special occasions only. The main difference between the wig or Democratic Rose pattern and the Rose of Sharon pattern is that the wig or Democratic Rose usually has four stems or leaves and flower shapes around the center rose, while the Rose of Sharon has three. This wig rose variation contains the large red circular flower, and then it has many st stems and leaves and roses coming from it. The green and red fabric appliqued on a white background was a popular trend during this time. Since the first sewing machine was not patented until 1851, it's more likely that this quilt was done entirely by hand. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have been inspired by the history of these quilts. Be sure to check out our website for our future virtual classes. Have a great day.